Welcome back to part two of my attempt at making a DIY aquarium light for a small reef tank. If you haven't seen part one yet, I suggest go back and watch that one to figure out um, if you want to know, you know, what's going on here. Uh, in this part, I'm just going to jump right in, show you what I've tried so far, where I failed, and where I have succeeded. And forgive that mess on the desk. <laughs> I know it needs to be cleaned up. But uh, I'm hard at work on this thing. So let's jump in and I'll show you what I've done so far. All right, so first up, uh, this is the hard drive enclosure, which I'll be using to uh, contain my project in. Um, so I was able to you know, get my heat sink mounted into here. Um, had these you know, rubber spacers, just kind of squishing it in place. I've got the LED pad. Uh, taped to here. Everything's just taped together right now while I'm still working on this. And I'll make some more permanent connections, uh, you know, when I'm ready. Uh, but yeah, that's just taped onto the heat sink. Um, I've attached some leads onto the A channel and to the B channel of my LED so I can plug these in to the power. And then on the other side, uh, this is the fan, the cooling fan. Uh, there's just still some circuitry to highlight or to light up. Um, there's a power indicator there, and there was a read-write uh, light there because this is a hard drive case, but I won't be... Here we go, focus. won't be using that. Uh, I think it is nice to keep that power light there, so I'll be using that. That's what this little circuit there is for. Um, and then back here, this is the actual hard drive controller. Um, I was thinking about taking that out, but I think I'm just going to leave it in there because that's already got my power switch mounted on it. It's got, you know, the power input jack on there. Um, it's, you know, my fan control is all going through there. Uh, and it doesn't seem to hurt anything to keep it in there, so I'll just leave that there. It's just taking up space. Uh, and who knows, maybe I'll <laughs> want to add a hard drive into this thing someday. I doubt it, but if I ever wanted to, there's my hard drive controller right there. Um, but anyway, back to the light. Uh, so yeah, so I got this all mounted into there and, uh, it's fitting pretty good. So I like that so far. So in the first video, um, I mentioned that I was going to try and control the intensity of the lights, uh, by using some potentiometers, um, to, you know, limit how much power was going to the LED boards into each channel. It turns out this was a very bad idea. This is not the way to do things. I had wired up this little board. Uh, basically, uh, the 12 volt was coming in between, I think it was the yellow and a black was ground. Um, and I just had that split off going through my potentiometers and then you know, two channels and the power going to the two channels on the LED. It did work for a little while. Uh, and then you know, I noticed that unmistakable smell of burning electronics. Um, yeah, these potentiometers got really hot and they actually started to smoke. So that was a fail right there. Um, so I had to go back to the drawing board and do some research. And it turns out um, this, these are not meant to dissipate power um, they're meant for very low uh, power situations for controlling like a signal or something. Um, not for running the full voltage through here. Uh, what I was attempting to do was basically run the voltage into here uh, and use this as a variable resistor. Uh, send some of the power to the uh, LEDs and just burn the rest of it off you know, within the resistor as heat. Uh, not a good idea. These are, that's not what these things are for. That's why they smoked and basically burned out. If I did want to do something like that, uh, apparently I'd have to use something called a rheostat, which is designed for burning off uh, power, and it could be used you know, exactly this application. But as I did more research, um, that's also not the best way to do things. Uh, basically, you're just wasting a lot of power and producing a lot of heat by doing it that way. So I sort of scrapped this idea. So upon further research, it turns out 
What I want it to do could be accomplished by using something called pulse width modulation. And you can go ahead and Google that what it is, but essentially what it is is you are switching the power on and off at a very high rate um, to your board. And since these are you know, some LEDs, um, they are going to you know, be basically turning the LEDs on and off really, really fast. Uh, so fast that the eye will not even detect it. Uh, so what happens is, you know, for a given period of time, if I had 100% duty cycle, um, the power would be on 100% of the time. So you're getting the full energy uh, to your board. Um, so you can kind of see where this is going. So 50% duty cycle is you're basically, for a given period of time, the energy is going to be on for half the time and off for half the time, um, which will, in, e in effect, basically uh, give you 50% power to your LEDs. Um, and also, you know, 75% is you're going to be on for 75% of the time, off for 25% of the time. And to your eye, it's going to look like it's only 75% as bright because it's only getting 75%. Um, or it's only getting energy for 75% of the time. Um, you know, 25% duty cycle, the same thing. And here's sort of a, another little graphic um, showing this. Uh, so this red line would represent uh, you know, the power or the voltage going into there. So if I were at 25% duty cycle, um, instead of getting the full 25 or the full 5 volts, um, I'm only getting what 1.25 volts. 50%, it's effectively getting 2.5 volts and, and so on. So that's basically what I need to do is basically send the uh, full energy to these LEDs, just switch it on and off at a very high rate. Um, and that would be the proper way to do it. And the nice thing about this is, you know, you're not wasting any power in between the pulses. So you're only sending the energy that you're going to be using and the rest of the time it's off. So there's no extra energy being burned off as heat or anything like that as I was trying to do before. So I know what I want it to do, but I still had no idea how to do it. So back to the internet and to Google, I went and started searching high and low. And luckily I came across this website right here, uh, inventable.eu. And it looks like this was exactly what I was attempting to do. Uh, the only problem is <laughs> this entire website is written in Spanish. Um, I'm not very fluent in Spanish, but luckily, Google to the rescue again, I can run it through Google Translate, and it's able to translate it to English for me. And I was able to understand the translation well enough to see that this is exactly um, what I wanted to do. And I'll just show you, skip ahead a little bit. Um, it's basically a circuit running off of 12 volts uh, with a potentiometer to adjust the intensity of an LED strip. And in my case, I'm using uh, an LED pad. And it's also running off 12 volts. So this was perfect. This is exactly what I want it to do. So I went ahead and started studying this. Um, and it looked like it's something that I could do. And, you know, this was a really, really good website. You know, they kind of explain how everything works here. And I was able to understand it well enough um, to get an idea of how this thing works. And basically, here's the schematic. And I'll show you in just a minute. I put this together to test if it worked. Uh, but I studied this thing. And you know, I'm no expert in this, but I will just kind of show you what my understanding is. Uh, so basically, we've got 12 volts coming in. Uh, and the way that this is going to work, or how this operates as the pulse width modulation... Um, we're going to be using this 555 timer chip. And basically that is a very old uh, chip. It's been around forever. Uh, and it's used to basically turn things on and turn them off. Um, and, you know, based on the values of, you know, this potentiometer, which is acting as a resistor, a variable resistor, and this 100 nanofarad um, capacitor, uh, basically will... Uh, define how long the period of time is you know, that, that the timer is going to be on. 
Um, it's got a couple of diodes here to ensure the proper polarity going into uh, the potentiometer. Make sure the current's going the right direction. Um, a few other things here. I know this capacitor here, uh, if pin 5 is not in use, they typically recommend to use 10 nanofarad. I think that's why that's there. Uh, this 10K resistor was going off of pin... Where's it coming off of? Pin 7. So this is connected to pin 7. Uh, that's the discharge value. And it's basically to burn off the uh, electricity or the, um, the current once it's uh, discharging the values in there. And like I said, I don't know exactly everything that's going on, but, you know, I just followed along with this. Uh, this capacitor here, this 47 microfarads, um, is to ensure the proper voltage going into this circuit. Uh, so if there's any fluctuation in the voltage, uh, this should be able to filter that out. Um, and then down here is where the real, uh, you know, stuff is happening. Um, so the chip is, you know, basically telling this MOSFET uh, when to switch on and off. And this is basically what is controlling the power uh, to the LEDs or what's delivering the power to the LEDs. Um, so it's coming into here and, you know, they got the low energy on the one side and the higher energy on the other coming out of there. And there's also an LED and obviously it needs a resistor uh, basically to show you that the circuit is working. So, you know, that's it in a nutshell. Um, and like I said, I'm no expert in this, but that's, you know, my understanding of this. And... You know, I basically said, all right, let me give this a shot. I'm going to put this together. And they give a list of all of the uh, components you would need. So I just went on Amazon, ordered a bunch of stuff. Um, so, you know, my plan of making this entirely out of spare parts kind of went out the window because I didn't have a lot of this stuff. Uh, so I had to go and order it. Um, and realistically, it's only a few dollars worth of parts. Uh, the problem is you really just can't buy, you know, one of anything. Um, you have to end up buying a lot, which I'll show you in a second, but all right, let's uh, switch over and I'll show you how I put this together. So like I said, uh, I went to Amazon and bought most of the components that I needed and just give you an idea. I think I have everything here. Um, but some of the stuff, you know, it's not worth it just buying like one or two of them. Um, it costs almost as much as buying a whole pack. So, you know, for instance, uh, what is this? This is a 1.K ohm resistor. I needed one of these, uh, but I ended up having to buy, you know, a 100 pack. Um, so now I'll have these, you know, forever probably. Uh, but, you know, again, it's only like 4 or $5, I forget. I'm going to put links to everything that I got from Amazon. But it's a few dollars, and, you know, now I've got resistors for other projects. Uh, here was the... 47 microfarad capacitors. Um, I think I did buy five of these. Probably should have bought a bigger pack. I probably got ripped off just buying such a small amount. But anyway, that's them. Uh, capacitors. I mean, I think I got a hundred of these. Again, it's a few dollars. And I'll have them for a lifetime. Uh, potentiometers. I had to buy some new ones because I burned up my old ones. But uh, I bought this pack because basically these ones had knobs, which my other one didn't. And this one came with the uh, washers and the nuts and everything. So if you do buy potentiometers, uh, make sure it comes with everything because not all of them do. A lot of them you just get the potentiometer. You don't get the actual uh, knobs and stuff, which I wanted to use. Uh, when I put this all together, uh, some MOSFETs. I think these were, I don't know, dollar each or something. I forget how many I got here. Ten of them. So definitely need to use one of them. Um, these I had from a previous project, but I just bought a whole bunch of different, uh, little, you know, project boards, solder stuff too. Uh, some resistors, which I already had some, some of these. So I'm going to use some of them. Uh, this is the other capacitor. Again, I bought, I forget how many, but I had a bunch of them now. Diodes. Uh, another 100 pack. Um... The 555 timer chip. Now this one, I ended up getting a 50 pack. Uh, this is something, definitely get a lot of these. Um, while I was working on this, I ended up blowing a couple of these. Uh, I think I lost about four of them or something, three or four. I, I messed up. Uh, I mean, I've got 50. I, didn't, I don't need 50, but uh, these things do seem to be pretty sensitive. So if you wire something up incorrectly, uh, chances are you're just going to smoke one of these things and you have to throw it out. It's no good. But, again, they're cheap enough. It was a few dollars. 
for 50 of them, so I've got plenty of spares. And, oh, I don't know what else I got here, but just all other odds and ends you'll need. You know, soldering, uh, station, some wires, all sorts of things like that. Um, I also had some connectors from before, which I used in this. Um, yeah, not 100% necessary, but I like connectors. It's sort of like when you do your plumbing, the more unions that you have, the easier it is to work on it later. That's why I like the connectors. Um, LEDs. I had a whole bag of these from before. And I just bought a huge pack. Uh, so I've got basically all different you know, colors. These are orange, blue, red. So I got all different color LEDs. Used a couple of those. And uh, yeah, that's about it for the parts. So in order to test my circuit uh, to see if this is even going to work, um, I just followed the schematic and I put everything together onto the spreadboard. And, you know, I just wanted to mock it up to see you know, how all the connections went together and to see if it would work. So I've got this thing hooked up and I've got it, you know, pinned into the 12 volt and ground of my power supply. And then I got it, the pot set all the way to the end, which is zero. And as you can see, if I adjust the potentiometer, this little LED indicating that the circuit is working comes on. And as I increase the potentiometer, the LED gets brighter. And this is a good sign. This means that this is actually working. So I am illuminating that LED via pulse width modulation uh, based on this little 555 timer, all the other components, and you know, going through the MOSFET. So that's pretty cool. It looks like it's working. So last thing to do is just hook up the LED puck to my circuit and see if this works with that. Okay, that's connected. And as I turn on the power, you can see my LEDs. I've got it hooked up to the B channel, which is the blue. And I am able to increase and decrease the intensity via the LED. Or I mean, via the potentiometer. Uh, it's hard to see the brightness, you know, on the camera because it's just basically just blinding uh, my iPhone. But it is definitely getting brighter and less bright, you know, as I turn the knob down. And there's down to zero. And just I can double check this on the A channel. And again, the circuit is working for me. And I've left this thing running, and there is no problem with heat. None of these chips are getting hot. Uh, you know, nothing is smoking. I'm not <laughs> getting any funny smells. Uh, so I think this is going to work for me. So I was pretty excited to see that. My next step was to turn this into something I could use. Because obviously this breadboard is not a permanent solution. Uh, so I got to work putting stuff together. And this is basically going to be the controller for my um, one of the channels on my LED pad. And I know this is not the prettiest work out there, but it was, I'm happy with it. I think I did a pretty good job considering the tools that I had and my experience level. Um, and yeah, so this is the board that I put together. That's the, look, that side. This is the back side. Uh, this is my ground wire. That's the 12 volt up on that side. And just made all the connections just like they were down on the breadboard. And this is, you know, one of the drivers I'll be using. And I got it hooked up. This is one of the potentiometers. Um, I can plug this in. And I still need to solder the power pins onto here. Uh, but I can use some alligator clips and we'll give this one a test. And this was not <laughs> my first attempt at this. Uh, my first board I made, um, I don't know what happened. Somewhere I shorted something out, and this one just never worked. I smoked a couple of chips, I think, 
Um, not exactly sure where I went wrong, so I just decided I couldn't figure it out. I put this one aside and went back to the drawing board, did it again, and it worked perfectly. So I need to, you know, build another one of these so I can have both of these uh, a driver-free channel. So that's going to be my next uh, step in this, but let's hook this up and see how it works. And this is my board hooked up, and I've got the power coming in on the back side via some alligator clips. And I've got this little potentiometer. And so you can see it's also working. I can control the brightness. You see the LED on here. And this is really good for troubleshooting because if for some reason my LED pads aren't working, uh, this light is still going to illuminate, letting me know that my circuit uh, is working on this side. And then there is the you know, LEDs. So yeah, it seems to be working and I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. I just need to build another one of these boards and somehow package it all together uh, into my little box here. And I will at least have a, a light which is um, able to be controlled manually. And you know, I could probably just hook this up to a timer, turn it on and off, and that should be you know, good enough. Uh, but I'm probably not going to stop there. I would love to be able to control this uh, via computer or something, put some kind of logic in there and have this thing ramp up and ramp down on its own. I think that would be pretty cool. So we'll see you know, if I can get that done. Uh, but for right now, I'm just focusing on you know, manual control of this thing uh, and see if I can get this all put together for that. Oh, and one other thing, um, I believe I'm putting a lot less power uh, into this LED module as it could potentially handle. Um, right now I've got 12 volts going in at 1.5 amps, I believe, which has given me, what, about 18 watts uh, of power. Now, a single LED puck on the max spec uh, lighting fixture uses about 60 watts, so I'm probably about three times less energy than this thing could potentially utilize, um, but which is fine for me. I'm only going to be using this on the small tank, uh, but I think, you know, if it turned out that I wanted to use this somewhere else, I'd probably have to get a larger power supply, and I think that this should potentially be able to handle that, but for right now, I'm just going to go with this, and uh, yeah, I guess that's about it for this video. Um, if you guys like what you're watching, Give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, you got to hit subscribe. Questions or comments, leave them below. I really appreciate uh, you guys watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Take care.